Welcome to lesson 8.2.4. Uh, today we're solving quadratic equations by factor x. What we're really doing here is we're taking those equations and rules. We're going to review how to take the factor those out to get your um, uh, the zero property products from that. But then we're going to take a table and we're going to work it backwards to find the rule or the equation and learn how to do that. All right, we're going to skip the problem down here and we're going to move on directly to this series of problems as soon as they come up here for us. I really thought I clicked on it. My computer's a little slow this morning, uh, if you can't tell. It's morning for me. It's 6 a.m., you guys. Um, actually, it's, um, it's a little after 6 here. All right, here we go. Um, I would like you to solve for the y-intercepts. Oh, my gosh. Solve for the x-intercepts for the following six problems. So pause the video, and A, B, C, D, E, and F, solve for your... Uh, I'm going to have questions on some, but do the best you can. Right, pause the video. All right, you should be back now. If you didn't do this exercise, you're, well, you're kind of hurting yourself here. Um, but your answers for these should be right there. I would expect that you may have questions from uh, this problem or that problem. I want you to come and see me, and I will help you how to get to each of these. Um, if they all made sense, that's great. Um, but I'm assuming that some of these might give you questions. Now we're moving on. Now that we know that you know how to factor and solve for the x-intercepts, we will move on to the next problem here, which is coming up very shortly with my extremely slow computer today. There it is. We need to take a table, and we need to now figure out the quadratic equation. Okay, But this really isn't that difficult. Take a look at this table right here. Now, one thing you might notice about this is my x-intercepts. And I'm praying. There we go. You might notice that in this one, x, wow, double x, huh? x equals negative 3 and x equals 2 when your y's are 0. Okay? So let's just do this here a little bit different. x equals negative 3 for 1. x equals positive 2 for the other one. Now, if we were to get that and reverse the zero process property on these two, okay, this one here, you might agree, would be x plus 3 equals, well, equals 0. And this one over here would be x minus 2 equals 0. See how we got those? Added 3 to both sides for this one to get x plus 3 equals 0. Subtract 2 from both sides here for x minus 2 equals 0. Now that we have that information, we know that this would have been your x plus 3. And the other one would have been an x minus 2. And that equals 0. Okay? Now that we have that, we can use a generic rectangle and solve for this. If you need the generic rectangle, go ahead and do that. I'm not going to use one because I'm just going to factor it. I've got x. Okay, pull down my little squared sign here. Squared. Pull down my little squared sign one more time. Um, plus x minus 6. And now instead of setting that equal to 0, I'm going to get it all the way back to the quadratic equation, which is it equals y. So x squared plus x minus 6 equals y. And if you plug in <clears throat> any of these points, you might notice 0 here. 0 plus 0 minus 6 is negative 6. So that works for this one. 1, or negative 1 here. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, plus negative 1. Those two zero out. Minus 6 is negative 6. If you plug in all of these points right here, it'll work for this one. So you start with your uh, x-intercepts right here. You reverse the zero property product right here. You then take those two, create them into your factors. That equals 0. You then draw a generic rectangle if you need it, and you create your equation from that. The other thing I want you to do now before you come to class is letter B. Find your two x-intercepts and create your uh, equation from that. And before I just happen to send you on your way, there was one more problem, but I don't know if I want to do it. Um, oh, you know what? I do want to do this one. 
But before I do this one with you, yeah, this is a good one. I want you to be able to get the formula from this one, but you might notice here, yeah, but Mr. Anderson, there's only one x-intercept on this one. So let's go back to number 73 for a second. Do you notice on here that you can find your vertex right here? At negative 2, this hits negative 9, and then it starts reversing and going the other way. You might notice that it goes up 1, up 3, up 5, up 7. And on the other way, it's up 1, up 3, up 5, up 7, up 9, up 11. You can see the pattern continues. That's one of two patterns that a quadratic equation will take. The other one is, um, this one works because this happens to be the vertex. This one works just slightly different because your vertex is right smack dab in the middle of these two, or um, negative 0 0.5 here. When this happens, you're going to notice that there's a zero difference here, plus 2, plus 4, plus 6, and on this side, here's your zero difference again, plus 2, plus 4, plus 6, plus 8. So, what we need to find here is what is the pattern happening here? You might notice that we reach a vertex right here at 725. You might notice this goes plus 1, plus 3, plus 5, plus 7, plus 9. So what you need to do on this one is reverse that process. We went plus 1, plus 3, continue that to find out what your other x-intercept is here. Once you have your two x-intercepts, you can then create, um, reverse the process on your zero property product, and you can uh, solve for your quadratic equation. Do that one as well. I know you got a lot to do on your own here. Pause your videos uh, when you need to, and if you have questions, please come and see me. We will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.